Welcome back to the Digital Studio. I'm Kayla Schmidt with another WNCT Now Digital News Update. We're starting off with some news out of Richmond, Virginia today. Today is Lobby Day over there. And what does Lobby Day mean? If you've never heard of the term, it's a term used by non-governmental organizations or groups for days members meet with politicians at various levels about something that they are in support for or are advocating for. And today, the Virginia State Police and Richmond Police Department were on scene for a massive gun rights rally hosted by the Virginia Citizens Defense League that began late this morning. So why is this all taking place? Well, last week, Virginia's governor declared a state of emergency temporarily banning weapons and all firearms on Capitol grounds due to a serious threat of violence. So this morning, led by Alex Alex Jones, thousands of Second Amendment supporters marched towards Virginia's capital to petition to their lawmakers. I'm going to pull up some tweets here now, giving us an idea of what the timeline of that march looked like. We have three tweets here from reporters. The first one reads, we made it on Capitol ground. Security was quick but thorough. Police are searching every inch of people's belongings, including contents of my makeup bag. And I know that must have been a really full makeup bag if she is a reporter out in the field today. The second one reads, megaphone in hand, in words, founder. Alec in forwards founder, excuse me, Alex Jones leads a group of 2A supporters towards Capitol Square. And that last one reads, masses upon masses of people are here outside of the Capitol. Now, chants of USA, USA, USA ring out intermittently. And that was around 1118 a.m. And that rally has now wrapped up. And despite concerns of Capitol Police, they say there were no arrests or any security issues at the march. And for a complete rundown of coverage and more of a timeline, the full story, you can visit our website at WNCT.com. But now we're going to bring it back to talking about Martin Luther King celebrations throughout the East. We're bringing in our Madison Forsey, who attended a march this morning right here in Greenville, Madison. Yeah, that's right. Hello, Kayla. So today I had the chance to walk alongside of people participating in um, a march on it to honor the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. in Greenville. They started at the Thomas Foreman Park and made their way down Fifth Street and ended at the courthouse, which, um, as I'm sure you can see, it was a chilly day out today. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to pull up were, some. We were all bundled up. They were so cold, but they were out there and they were um, just as fired up as I think they would have been if it was 30 degrees warmer. So it was pretty cool to walk alongside of them today. Awesome. Now tell me why why people were marching. I know it's Martin Luther King Day, but there was more to this march. Yeah. So it was there were three different human human rights groups there. Um, so they were talking a lot about how MLK Day isn't just a day off. It's a day to stand up for what you believe in. So while we do some of us get to take the day off of work, kids are out of school. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. was an activist and he wanted to challenge the injustice that he saw in his community and across the nation, and that this is really a day for people to do the same. And it's not just a day off, but a day to take that time to to stand up and fight for something that you believe in. And what were some specific topics people talked about at that rally? Yeah, so there were five different um, community representatives that spoke there, but they talked about a lot of different things. Um, they talked about the need for police accountability, so establishing kind of like a citizen review board um, within Greenville and for the Greenville Police Department. Um, they spoke about affordable housing, criminal justice reformed, performing kind of other big national social and economic justice initiatives, but localizing them for Greenville. So lots of different things that people were very, very passionate about today. And I know you'll have more tonight on our newscast. So where else and what time can people find your story? Yep. So I will be on it five and six with more. I talked to um, some organizers of the event uh, that spoke and and some people from the community. So you'll hear from them. Um, That'll be on at five and six. And as always, it's on WNCT.com. Um, um, So if you missed the broadcast, you can check it out there. Perfect. Thank you, Madison. No problem. Now we're going to take a look at our first alert weather forecast with Alex Wasilenko. Happy Monday, everybody. I'm your first alert meteorologist, Alex Wasilenko. Big shifts in the weather pattern to start off the new work week. We're talking about lots of sunshine, brisk northerly winds, and also some very cold temperatures. At least we'll have a good deal of sunshine to carry us through the rest of the afternoon and into the early evening. That should make for a beautiful sunset. 
But a chilly one. Make sure to grab all those winter layers and bundle up through the afternoon and even overnight period. Those northerly winds will remain in place overnight into early Tuesday morning as we wake up to temperatures in the 20s and 30s. But it'll likely feel more like the teens with those brisk northerly winds still in place. As we head into the day Tuesday itself, some clouds will linger along the coast with just a slight chance of a stray sprinkler shower. Otherwise, look for inland communities to get in a lot of sunshine during the day Tuesday. Highs will top out in the low 40s then. As we can move through midweek and into the end of the work week, we'll see a brief warm up back into the 40s by Wednesday, 50s, Thursday, 60s as we head into the day Friday for inland and coastal communities. But Friday is when the clouds will begin to build. And that's all ahead of our next storm system that will enter the forecast by Saturday. Saturday will feature the likelihood for some scattered showers, but we do clear out just in time for the second half of the weekend. Sunday is looking much drier, sunnier, and nicer and quite seasonable with highs in the middle 50s. Make it a marvelous rest of your Monday. I'm your first alert meteorologist, Alex Wasilenko. Happy Monday, everybody. Finishing up for our digital news update, homeowners in Hyde County can now apply for FEMA funding to elevate their homes. The county announced Wednesday that through a grant program, funds have been made available now. Completed applications must be received by January 24th at the end of the workday. So 5 p.m. on January 24th is the deadline for completed applications. To qualify, the home must be the primary residence. So you must live currently at the home year-round. You have to carry flood insurance after construction. So after the home is eligible, elevated, you must sign off that you will carry flood insurance. And lastly, the home must be structurally capable for elevation. So again, the county announced Wednesday that through the grant program, those funds have been made available. So if you're a homeowner in High County and um, would like to apply for FEMA funding to elevate your home, that deadline is January 24th. And that's all we have for your afternoon WNCT Now digital news update. I'm Kayla Schmidt in the digital studio. Yeah.